At the top of the page, it says a translation is a transformation where all the points of a figure can be moved the same distance in the same direction. Okay, a translation can also be referred to as a shift or a slide, and a vector is used to demonstrate how far, the distance, the magnitude of the vector uh, and the direction in which you are sliding. So you slide left, right, and then you slide up and down. So a shift left would be a negative x value. A shift right is going to be positive. If you're moving down, that's a negative y value. A shift up is a positive y. And then the vector could be looked at as the hypotenuse of a right triangle if you're going left, right, up and down the coordinate plane that to find the length of it, we can use Pythagorean theorem. Okay, because your distance and direction are fixed, the shape and size of your image are the same as your pre-image. Therefore, it's a rigid motion. So a translation is a rigid motion or isometry. Now, the, can anyone describe the translation up here in this picture, how the originals moved? So how the originals moved to the image. <coughs> Hannah? Down one what? Right down one right four. Now, that would be the case if we were going from this one to this one, but we're not. So if I actually draw the vector, we're going from A to A prime in that direction. Yep, the prime symbols are very small. So we're actually describing it, the movement, we're going left, one, two, three, four, up, one. Okay? So that's the shift or movement described in words. In the coordinate plane, the capital T is the symbol, just as the lowercase r is for reflection. And you take the point that's here, okay, you take that number that's there, it's known as A, you add that to your X, and then the number here, B, you add that to the Y. Properties preserved. Well, because it's a rigid motion, your angle measure and distance are the same. Parallelism, well, these are triangles, but if you had rectangles and those sides that were parallel, when you move them, they're going to remain parallel. Points between two points will remain between. All three points would still be collinear. And then what about orientation? Is that the same? Yes. To go from A to B to C, it's in a clockwise manner. So A to B to C in the pre-image is also clockwise. So unlike the reflection, orientation is preserved. Go ahead and just quickly read one and two and I want to uh, point out the big difference between the two. So number one, this says determine the image. We're looking for the image. So that means I started with the point 5, negative 3, and then went to what point? Okay. Over here, it says the image of a point is. So I'm looking for that starting point and knowing that the image is negative 1, 5. So you really need to be... Uh, careful and pay close attention to what point you're finding. And number one, when you want to find the image under the translation negative 2, negative 1, you just simply subtract 2 and subtract 1, and the image is going to be 5 minus 2, 3, negative 3 minus 1, negative 4. Now this translation as a T would be T 3, negative 4, but written here, it is kind of helpful. If you want to find the original point or pre-image, well, you could set up an equation. 
So what plus 3 gives you a negative 1, and then what minus 4 gives you 5 for a y value. So if you solve here, subtract 3, x is negative 4, and double check, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1, good. Add the 4 over, and y is 9. So to check, is 9 minus 4, 5? It is. So which is the original point? Answering those types of questions, and then finding the image. Questions? All right, number three, writing the rule that maps one point onto the other. So you want to take a look at your x values. How do I go from a negative 5 on the x-axis moving right to 12 or to 7? You would add 12. On the y-axis, to go from a positive 5 down to a 1, you would subtract 4. So you could write it with the capital T, so T, 12, negative 4, or you can write it with the x, y, arrow, x plus 12, y minus 4. Last one on the front, a translation maps the point negative 2, negative 5, 2. So we're going from there to here. So what is that translation? We're going to find the image of 1, 4 under the same translation. So to go from a negative 2 left to a negative 4, how did we shift or what do we do? Add or subtract? Subtract 2. And then to go from a negative 5 to a negative 4, you add 1. You don't have to put the plus. You won't ever see it with the plus. So it's just t, negative 2, 1. So subtract the 2, add the 1. Under the same translation, the image of 1, 4 is negative 1, 5. <laughs> on the back side, we're going to fo focus specifically on the vector piece. If you look, um, just like a directed line segment, so when we were partitioning a line segment, that line segment had uh, an initial or starting point and an end point, okay? So component form for a vector, though, you need to be very careful because the symbols are not parentheses. So whenever it wants the component form, we need to use, uh, use those symbols there. But if I'm going, here's my point, I'm going from F to G, F being the starting point, and then G being your terminal or ending point. You always have with um, the movement or the shift, you're going to have a horizontal and vertical component or movement. Okay, you may not though, so I shouldn't tell you always, because if you're not moving left or right, that's going to be a zero right here. So I'm going five units right, three units up, so there's the component form. Just be careful or make note over here, you never want to use the parentheses because those are the coordinates of a point. If you're talking about the component form of a vector, we have to use those symbols here. So let's look at the first question. We have two, oh, and it's left there from earlier, as you can see, so we'll draw another vector. Um, but there is part of the vector that's missing, because you can see not only does the vector have a line, but it should have an arrow. So the first part says to draw the vector that defines the translation. So you draw, you can line up your ruler. We draw an arrow from a point to its image. So there's the vector from A to A prime. But I'll draw another one. You can do it from any point to its image. How about C to C prime? Whoops. I guess I can't get rid of it. I'm not going to spend the time. So there's part A. Part B is to write the component form. So for part B, using these symbols here, the horizontal shift is noted here. So how did we move? From C to C prime, it's right one, two, three, down, one. 
So it's 3, negative 1. Find the magnitude of the vector. Your magnitude is the size of it, its length. Do you want to use, the, the nice thing here is you don't have to use distance formula. Because we're in the coordinate plane, okay, you can look at this as a right triangle, and it's a, whatever the horizontal component is, that's your leg, so one leg's three, and then the other leg is one. Okay, so you can just do Pythagorean theorem. The vector is the C or the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is always equal to the square root of leg squared plus leg squared. So 9 plus 1 is the square root of 10. You can use distance if you want to. You can also use Pythagorean theorem. Last question. Translate um, the triangle. So to translate this triangle using this vector in words, if that's a negative, it means we're going left 3, positive 5 is up 5. You could write out all the coordinates for your A, your B, and your C, all three points, and then subtract 3, add 5, but it's easier just to go left 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And note 2, from A to B, you go up 1, 2, left 1, so for if this is B prime, up 2, left 1 is A prime. Now, the next part says to, after you translate the triangle, uh, and we have to state the coordinates of its image. So we do have to state the A prime, B prime, C prime. <coughs> so let's do C. C is 0, 4, good. B is negative 3. 1, A is negative 4, 3. Then verify that it's a rigid motion. So if it's a rigid motion, that means your distance. There's no way to verify the angles are preserved unless you have a protractor. So to verify that distance is preserved, okay, or length of all three sides, we use the distance formula or Pythagorean theorem. Since this didn't say to proof, okay, it's, and when we're doing a proof, we use the distance formula. Since this didn't say to prove and it just said to verify, I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem. So if I look at the lengths of AB and A prime, B prime, well, AB is a 1 by 2 right triangle, and so is for A prime, B prime, a 1 by 2. So the hypotenuse, or the length, a, B is going to be the same as A prime, B prime. You can write them separately. You can do all three of lengths of the original and then all three lengths of the image, but they are the same. So that's equal to the square root of 1 plus 2, or 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is the square root of 5. Let's do B, C. B, C is a 1, 2, 3 by 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So length BC is equal to B prime C prime, which is 3 squared plus 3 squared radical 18. And you can reduce it, but you don't have to. Reduced it would be 3 radical 2. And the last length is from A to C, and A prime to C prime. That's a 1 by 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is also a 1 by 1, 2, 3, 4. So AC is equal to a prime c prime and both are 1 squared plus 4 squared which is square root of 17. So to summarize triangle a b c is congruent to triangle a prime b prime c prime by the side 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 postulate and is a rigid motion, and I should say capital T, the translation is a rigid motion as distance 
is preserved.